Greetings friends, it's Zara. Today we're going to go ahead and discuss Darmal Tribute in Darmal North. So, as most of you know, hunters can pretty much solo this. So what I'm doing here is I know that the pet has gone past. I have my pet with me. And right here I've got aggro. I'm going to hop up on here. I'm going to hold off until I see that they stop casting. Once they stop casting, I'll keep moving. I put my pet on stay back there. That way he just de-aggros. I don't lose him. He doesn't die. He doesn't get killed, doesn't lose happiness, he just kind of de-aggros. I target the pat here and make sure to mark him, that way I can tell where he's at in the future. I look ahead, I see there's only two casters, make sure I'm out of combat. Jump off, up here I only have to worry about one melee, so get up here. I'll scatter shot him, run along the edge here, get out of LOS, and I'll fiend death. So fiend death works a lot better. I know a lot of people have been complaining about how they can't do DM, DM tribute because their fiend death will be resisted. Well, I used to make that same complaint until I realized, oh yeah, Fiend Death only is resisted if something's really right on top of you. So if you take proximity to the mob and line of sight of the mob into account, then Fiend Death will be resisted far less frequently. So right here I kind of get a little impatient because I know I'm recording, and I incidentally pull both mobs on both sides. Usually I'm able to do that without pulling, but not a big deal. I just get over here, I Fiend Death, everything resets, problem solved. I make sure to make sure Guard Fingus is nowhere around, so once I know I'm good, I run off, hug this wall right here, don't have to pull that hyena pack, and then go ahead and open this gate. So now that all this is taken care of, I get this gate opened, I'm going to summon my pet, and then once I summon my pet, I'm going to put him on stay back here, I'm going to drop a frost trap right here, I see the eyes coming, so let me go ahead and take care of that eye real fast. Just a quick auto shot, arcane shot combination will take care of it. I'll, set, I'll make sure that my fiend death is off cooldown shortly after this, and then I'll go ahead and send my pet in with a backslash pet attack, backslash pet passive macro. What this will do is it'll attack, and then when I hit it, my pet will return to wherever he was previously in the stay position. Now, I do get hit with cripple here, not really avoidable, unless, of course, you have shadow reflector from engineering, which I have engineering. I just haven't made the time or the effort to really make any of those fun trinkets so now once I get back here I fiend death now notice I don't jump right back up here because sometimes if something is under the effect of your frost trap or it can sometimes bug out and re-aggro you so I just kinda hold off here note that this is a this is a purely a safe run this is not speed running this is a if you follow everything to a T you're gonna be just fine here so yet again I have my pet he's ready so I go ahead and send him in to attack after I make sure fiend death cooldown is about 10 seconds away from coming up so he'll attack the closest guard and then I send him to attack the warlock that is furthest away from me now the nearest pack will run across the frost trap not only to follow the wolf but to also get back to me once the thing once the wolf is LOS and despawns. Now I'm gonna fing death here, but again I don't jump right up. I sit here and I wait, I wait, I wait. I make sure that I see the Doom Guard. He's still not back yet. It's still not back in there he is. So you just gonna make sure that the D Doom Guard and all the guards they reset properly before you really want to get up because sometimes it can bug out. I've seen it happen. I don't know why it occurs. I don't know what's causing it, but whether it's the dots on my pet that re-aggro them, or if it's the frost trap ore that respawn, that retargets them, or re-aggros them, I'm not sure. So now that I know Fiend Death is good, I use Furious Howl here to get the trash pack to all follow my pet. If you don't have a wolf, you can't really do that because they'll, some of them will aggro you, so it's, you have, make, have to make sure you have a wolf here with Furious Howl. Now, I try, this is a more advanced technique. So I run up here, and I miss the jump, and I'm like, well, crap, now I have no choice. I have to try and scatter shot concussive shot continue running I've gone past the eye it's a no man it's a no return like <laughs> no turning back at this point thankfully it works out the thing death goes off normally if you jump that ledge you only have to scatter shot one of the mobs and you can avoid the other one entirely and if you see the eye coming you can shoot it without having any issues but as it stands it all worked out scatter the nearest one concussive the furthest one run up thing death Make sure everything despawns, the aggros, I hit the invis pot, run up just in time. Make sure that you don't have any aggro here. Sometimes stuff on the bottom floor can still somehow aggro you. I notice I look at my freeze trap, it's not on it's not being affected by me being in combat, so I know that I'm good. Put my pet on stay, lay a frost trap up near the top, send my pet into attack with my macro. Now you're looking to the trash pack on the right. You want to make sure that they don't pull here. 
So I make sure hit the macro again. My pet's going to return to its stay position. Don't use Furious Howl here. You don't want to use Furious Howl because in the off chance that those guys do pull right there, if you pop Furious Howl, they'll aggro your pet instead of aggroing you. So you'll still have a shot at getting to the door. That's why you want to make sure the Frost Trap or is at the very furthest top of that staircase as you can. That way it'll affect everyone that goes down that stairwell. So you get around this corner, you thing death, you make sure they return to their position. Your fr Freeze Trap is usable. Pop up. Make sure you're good to go. Bring your pet back up. Nobody's aggroed you. You're good to go. So here at this point, all I need to do is do a couple more of these maneuvers, and I'm good. Some of my pet right here in the corner. Put him on stay. Lay a frost trap. Make sure that I'm ready to go with my fiend death coming off cooldown in the next 10 seconds. Now, once it hits 10 seconds, I'm going to go ahead and send my pet in with my macro, and he's going to go in. He's going to aggro. Make sure to have furious howl on the standby. He returns. Use furious howl. Everything's aggroed him. Hug the wall here. Hopefully, I don't get it will cripple. I do not. And continue running forward. Get around this corner. My pet will despawn. And then I'll hit the fing death. And I'll turn the corner to make sure that everything comes across. No problems, no issues, no questions, no concerns. No chances of me getting aggro. So once I see everybody's out of the trap or the reset, I pop up. I'm going to summon my pet here. And then make sure my pet is full health. Because this one right here, this maneuver right here, is going to require that your pet be full health because it can your pet can be dazed and if your pet gets dazed you might be in trouble so right here I put my pet on stay and have him attack the guard chrome crush he's also going to attack the mobs over there so my pet kind of derps here with the macro and he goes back to his stay position but thankfully he gets ahead of chrome crush without any issue he gets aggro he runs back uses furious howl everybody's on my pet and then go on. Now, I stayed in that corner for a few seconds longer than normal because if my pet happened to have gotten days there, then it would give you an opportunity to fiend up in that corner and you can just resummon your pet, revive him, and then just pull that one trash pack from there. But as it stands, it works out in my favor. I fiend death and we're good to go. So I go ahead and mark one of the wolves here that's in that pack. So now I can just follow them whichever direction they go. Sometimes they'll go to the left, sometimes they go to the right. It looks like they're going to the far side away from me. So this is pretty standard. Once I get my pet to full health, I go ahead and re-up True Shadow over here. Get around the corner here, and I'm going to kill these dogs. It's kind of frustrating. A lot of people, you know, I end up being able to kill King pretty quickly. If I don't kill these dogs, I can usually kill King in about, you know, 10, 11 minutes, which is very good. It's actually the cap. You don't really want to kill it much faster than that because then you'll run into issues with reset. But in this situation, I just, I always take the safe route. I always pull the dogs. You don't have to do this, but it requires you to be a lot more, you know, alert in the future because you don't want to have King or his buddy coming after you because if they if they happen to come across at the same time the dogs are patting the near side where you'll be standing all along these pillars they can pull they can just basically just have to reset the entire fight so I just pull I just pull the dogs here just for the sake of my sanity I know it's gonna cost me an extra two three minutes but if I go ahead and get these guys killed off I usually don't have any problems in the future I never have to reset the fight at all unless just some miracle something crazy happens now, the dogs are now dead, and at this point, I can set my pet up, my, me and my pet up for success here. Now, a lot of people are complaining about the issue with linked aggro with King and his assistant. I personally have been looking for a way to avoid this now that especially I have 8 of 8 tier 1. And what I've come to realize is that it's very doable in the fact that as long as you body pull using Eyes of the Beast, you will not have any problems with linked aggro whatsoever. No matter what set bonus you have, how many of what set you have, it's a wonderful, beautiful thing. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate this for you. Let me get my map. I'm going to get my mana up real fast. Once my mana is up at full, what I do here, I have a macro for Eyes of the Beast. You can check it out in the link below. If you join the Discord, go to the macro section. You'll have all access to all my macros. I have a wealth of macros, and they work wonderfully, every single one of them. I really love this Eyes of the Beast macro. It allows me to go ahead and just use Eyes of the Beast. It'll also allow me to put my pet on stay at a far distance. And by doing that, it basically guarantees that my pet is not going to be killed by King. Even though he aggros him in melee range, he will immediately despawn because he's so far away from me. So right here, I open up my pet spellbook. I get Eyes of the Beast, I pop Dash, I make the run, 
pop dash, my pet leaps over, is able to run over, and I have to basically sit here on top of cat uh, on top of King and his and his assistant for them to aggro. But finally, once they get aggro, I take off Eyes of the Beast, run over the quarter. My pet's gonna despawn. I'm gonna summon him. I'm gonna put him on stay. I'm gonna pet. I'm gonna min pet here. I'm gonna fiend death. I've got plenty of time to run around here. Fiend death. They drop aggro. And now it's just a matter of just killing King. So you're going to see a couple of different positions here. I do this intentionally to do this fight this way because I want people to see that there are various different places that you can reset this fight. Or excuse me, not reset this fight, but you yourself can Fing Death. So I make sure to try and get off of Viper Sting here and also have to auto attack the assistant. That way he doesn't get it. He doesn't end up going all the way to my wolf because unfortunately Viper Sting does not pull aggro. So right here. My Fiend Death is not on cooldown yet, so I use the King's knockback to my advantage for him to knock me way far away and then set myself up to be able to Fiend Death very effectively. That's a very advanced technique, and I don't really recommend to a lot of people who have never actually done this to do this because it can be kind of stressful if you freak out and you panic and you don't realize that you're actually in a good spot. You can really get yourself in a lot of hurt. So here I use rapid fire because the system's closer to me than I would like. So I want to try to get as many shots on King as possible. So right here I just kind of LOS. I use aim shot. I'm not even sure if I get it off here. I do not actually. So I bring the assistant along, along, along the edge. And now all of a sudden, okay, now he's going to far run on the far, far side. Him and King are basically side by side. I run over here. I feign death. Far proximity away from them. I also LOS of them. I get a chance to drink up here. They have a long walk ahead of them to get back to my pet. So I have a good deal of time here to get the full mana. So I run over here. I think this is the point where I switch to Aspect of the Hawk because I feel comfortable about their positioning. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and open up with Aim Shot here. So the key thing here is to know you're going to see that bush that's right next to where King is standing right now. If he gets to that bush when he's running towards your pet, that's a good sign of when you can be rest assured. You can use, you can start casting aim shot and multi shot combo at around that point. It, even if you don't have it on rapid fire or quick shots, the chances of him getting your pet at that point is going to be very, very minimal. So I want to start using new techniques here, I believe, with my pet running out from behind that pillar here momentarily because. I don't typically recommend doing that for newcomers because, it's again, it's an advanced technique and you don't really want to do it if you're not really prepared for it. You can't really deal with the panic of dealing with, you know, your pet being in in harm's way or you being in harm's way or both. And because some people, they freak out, they panic. Believe me, I've been there. At this point, you'll see that it says resisted there. Okay, so I didn't actually realize this until much later in my, you know, experiences with Dire Maul Tribute. When it gets resisted there, it's not King or Chrome Crush that, that's getting that's resisting you. It's the spirits. So sometimes you got to be really careful about when you are unable to drink. So right here, this is the advanced tactic I'm talking about. I pull my pet out to attack King and it force King to sometimes charge and allowing you an opportunity to get a second or even third aim shot off. So it's, it's very, very important that, again, you keep in mind that, this again, this is an advanced tactic. You don't necessarily have to do this, but I just recommend it for those that feel like they're not killing King as fast as they'd like, but they, they feel comfortable, they feel at ease when they're doing this portion of the tribute run, that they feel like you can get away with putting their pet in a little bit more danger. Because, obviously, if your pet dies, then the whole thing has to restart because you're not going to be able to kite King unless he's sub-20%. So at this point, I'm putting some pressure on King now. The Shaman is about completely out of mana. And at this point, it's important to note that you don't have to really worry about anything else happening here. Because once the Shaman or the Mage or the Priest or whatever his assistant ends up being in this particular fight, once they get completely oom, then they're essentially completely out of the fight. Especially the Shaman, because you'll notice... Or you may not notice. I can't. I can't assume you're going to notice it just by looking at the video. But the shaman is actually the easiest to deal with, at least to me, because what's going to happen is the shaman's just going to continue to throw up, you know, small heals, and he's also going to continue to throw up totems, which is going to keep his mana super low. So you're not going to have to worry about the shaman's mana kind of regening. Now here, I make a mistake. I attack the totem, thinking, "Oh, well, I want to send my pet in." Well, unfortunately. Now, oh boy, is going to come up on me. But I know that he's completely oom um at this point. I'm not really too worried about it. 
because all I got to do is just watch his positioning, watch his positioning, watch his positioning, and then I'm going to jump off here as soon as he stops casting. I'm going to hit Aspect of the Cheetah. He's going to come around the far side of this pathway, and he's quite a bit slower than King, so I really don't have to worry about it. I get up here, I feign death, I drink, and I'm in a really good spot here because the King's got a far way to go, the Shaman's got a far way to go, but the King is around 35, 40% health, so I know that this is probably a good time for me to turn and burn here. So I'm going to go ahead and open up with aim shot, multi shot. I'm going to send my pet in so my so he's going to continue to charge at my pet. See, he charges my pet there in the corner. And then I put my pet in the corner. And it's just, you just want to stay on top of this. I, th I don't know if this aim shot gets off or not. It does, actually, but I'm not able to get multi shot off. I'm also having some bad luck with crits, too. My crits are not landing the way that I like. If I actually were to go ahead and buff up in the future, I'm tempted to get, like, Scorepok and also get an Elixir of Mongoose and other things to help me kind of burn through here because it only 22% crit, you know, non-raid buffed. It's kind of annoying to come in here and I only crit, like, a, you know, a fifth of the time. And, like, it's usually on my auto shots. Like, here I think I might, yeah, I finally get a crit in my multi-shot. But my aim shots, are not, I don't think I get a single aim shot crit in this entire fight. So... And now that I know I'm doing pretty well here, I got quick shots burst. I'm just burning King down. He's only got one more round trip, and he'll be down. So I LOS his partner here, I feign death. See, at this point, I'm not even acknowledging his assistant. I'm not even acknowledging because I know he's a shaman. He's not going to have any mana whatsoever. He's just going to throw up the occasional heal on himself, and that's going to be it. So at this point, it's a, it's a wrap. My pet attacks King, and then I just continue to unload on King, and now it's just... A wrap. I'm going to throw up a quick aim shot, and that'll be it. That's the end of it. So, guys, I, it's not something to, like, be incredibly afraid of. I understand that tribute runs for a lot of people can be very stressful. But if you just give it some time, take your take your time with it, be patient with it, I promise it'll all work out. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, be sure to hit me up in the Discord, PM me, and I'll answer everything that I can. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one. Zero out.